What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you want to support me, you can now follow me on Patreon. Not only is it the best way to support the channel, additionally you'll get more say in what decks I cover. Special shout out to all of my high contributing patrons, Newsome, you rock. Additionally, you can always use that TCG player link in the description down below to help out the channel. Now let's get into today's pre-con upgrade with Explorers of the Deep. And honestly, out of the gate, this pre-con's not terrible. It has a ton of merfolk lords that just buff up your entire board and then you kill everybody with the grind right you're just going to accumulate a ton of value the only thing is this deck is lamping or lacking ramp i know that sounds crazy but there's a ton of ways to put lands into your hand but not a lot of ways to get the land from your hand onto the battlefield so we're going to be adding a few ways to do that additionally we are going to add some more recursion pieces because the recursion in the deck is kind of lacking even though your commander really wants to fill your graveyard not to mention we are throwing in a couple non-budget options so be sure to stay to the end for that this is a budget upgrade but i will be giving you some non-budget upgrade options options so like i said stay to the end enjoy that and now let's get into the pre-con upgrades the first thing we're going to do is upgrade this ramp package replacing the artifacts with nature's lore rampant growth and far seek these are going to be far more efficient because they'll get you lands instead of artifacts and lands are just going to synergize with what this deck wants to do better while being more permanent than those artifact options azusa's lost but seeking's also going to be super solid here we are getting a lot of land cards to our hand using our commander so now being able to play two additional lands three lands per turn on our turn is going to be amazing summer bloom again it's like a one-off azusa playing four lands that turn can be an extremely explosive and catapult you ahead of your opponents Biden of Thassa. I really like this because not only does it force one of your opponents to attack to ensure that you'll have a opponent to attack next turn, it's also going to give you some solid card advantage. Yes, that opponent can attack you, but it's going to be not worth the crackback on their part. Harold's Horn is going to be way more efficient than some of the cards they had in the deck that allowed you to cast Merfolk from the top of your library. Now we are able to lower the cost of our Merfolk while sometimes getting an additional card off the top of our library. Stryonic Resonator doubling up on our commander's ability is going to be massive. Everybody getting to explore twice can really start filling your graveyard while additionally filling your hand full of those lands. Tyrant Guard can be amazing. A lot of those creatures are going to have counters on them. So this is basically just going to be a heroic intervention that sits on the battlefield. Genesis is going to be amazing recursion in the deck. Now we can get those creature cards in our graveyard to our hand. Wonder is also going to be amazing. Now all of our merfolk have a very good form of evasion. I know there's a lot of evasion in the deck already, but just adding Wonder to the deck is definitely going to make that more efficient and consistent. Kamal Heart of Krosa. I did want an overrun effect, and since we have a ton of lands, it's going to be solid to start animating those lands to chip in for some lethal damage as well. Moving on to the non budget options we have kodama of the west tree this is going to be solid to not only give all of our creatures with counters on them trample but additionally we're just going to keep ramping to oblivion burgeoning and exploration is going to be a solid way to get those lands in our hand out of our hand onto the battlefield cultivator colossus is also an amazing way to do this while drawing a ton of cards ac tyrant of gyre another solid form of card advantage that additionally lets us play the lands from our hand and throw them onto the battlefield thada adele i really like this in the deck we can make her massive she has island walk additionally we can just grab everybody's one ring since a ton of people are running that and really just start getting a ton of card advantage or you know soul ring for the ramp everybody's got artifacts that we're going to want wonder wine profits now i came across this guy i probably wouldn't include him in the deck because he kind of seems very unfun to play against but he's also very powerful this guy can honestly result in infinite if not pseudo infinite extra turns causing you to kill everybody through combat damage pretty messed up if you ask me Moving on, let's talk about the cuts. We are cutting Commander Sphere, Arcane Signet, and Simic Signet. Remember, we added the more efficient ramp. Uh, Benthic Biomancer, I think we are already filling the graveyard efficient enough, so we definitely don't need some looting effects tacked on top of that. Commit and Memory. I think there's just more efficient removal, and then, like I said, we are filling our graveyard up, so I'd rather be able to utilize our graveyard than uh, have a way to shuffle our graveyard back into our library. Coral Helm Commander. This one just seems like you need a lot of mana 
and a lot of investment just for a merfolk lord. There's already plenty of merfolk lords in the deck, so I definitely don't want to run one that we have to sink a lot of mana into. Inspiring Call. Now, personally, I just really dislike card draw effects that require you to have a board state. I want my cards when I am behind and losing, or I want my cards to be a consistent flow of value. And this really doesn't do either of those, so we're going to cut it. Merfolk Skydiver. Five mana proliferate. I almost never want to activate that, so we're definitely going to cut it here. Quandrix Command. Definitely didn't have enough bang for buck for my taste, so I went ahead and cut it. Realm Walker. Again, I decided Herald's Horn would be better than Realm Walker, just because not only do we get the cost reducing effect that Herald's Horn has, additionally, we do get that free card draw sometimes. Now, you could argue that Realm Walker allows you to cast more Merfolk from the top of your library, causing you to draw multiple cards per turn, but we already have effects like that in the deck, so having two of those effects on the battlefield does exactly nothing for you. Simic Ascendancy, now honestly I just cut this from the deck because I would rather win by smashing face instead of putting a ton of counters on everything. I don't deny that this is probably a very powerful card in the deck, I just dislike alternate win cons, so that's why I cut it personally. Thassa God of the Sea, now this one does not synergize with the deck very much aside from it having Merfolk S art. We don't really need to scry a whole lot. We are getting a ton of cards from the top of our library, a ton of information off the top of our library from our commander already. We don't need additional ways to do that. And then we already have a ton of evasion in the deck. So Thos is just kind of here as a flavor win maybe or value. I don't know, but it's going to be an easy cut in my book. Let's move on to the cuts we are going to make if you want to upgrade with the non-budget options as well. We are going to cut Explore and Growth Spiral. Now, the non-budget option adds a lot of more ways to get those land cards out of our hands, such as burgeoning, exploration, even AC. So effects like Explore and Growth Spiral aren't as important anymore and they can be easily cut. Cut. Metallic Mimic is going to be a solid cut. Yes, it synergizes with the deck. Yes, it's another Lord, but it's just going to be a solid cut when we are adding in more efficient cards. Tributary Instructor. Now, this card's very good in case of a board wipe. You're going to draw a ton of cards. But honestly, like I said earlier, I'd rather just consistent card draw that I know I can count on. And this card draw is kind of inconsistent since we aren't planning on sacking any of our things with 1-1 one -one counters on them. We just want them to bash face. So he's going to be an easy cut here since we are adding some more efficient card draw options in the non-budget option uh, section. Vural of the Hallclade, this is going to be a solid cut here because it only buffs up one of your creatures. Now there's a lot of effects in the deck that already double the amount of counters we're putting on our creatures, so having one that taps and only targets one creature is going to be a solid cut here. Zagana Utopia Speaker. We are adding Kodama in our non-budget option. So Kodama is just going to be way more efficient than uh, Zagana over here. Just because it costs less mana, we don't have to invest mana into it to get the payoff. And additionally, Kodama is going to give us lands whenever we deal combat damage. So again, just more efficient options there. And that's going to do it for the pre-con upgrade, guys. Be sure to keep the lookout. I'm going to do the two other ones as always i'd like to thank my patreons i couldn't do it without you guys and uh yeah i hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors i will see you in the next one